In this video I'm going to show you how you can go from post-edited machine translation to what I call pre-edited machine translation. I'm also going to show you how you can go to what we could consider post-edited revision to a pre-edited revision model. This video was made in April 2015. Now, to do this, I'm going to use MemoQ, the cat tool, and I'm going to use Dragon Naturally Speaking, a voice recognition system. So, here's a text to translate. I've actually taken the text from um, the European Union website, and it's the text about Portugal, which you can find from typing this. The reason I'm mentioning this is the example I'm giving is Portuguese to English, and if you don't speak Portuguese, you could come here, choose another language that you understand, and then the example will be easier to follow. So let's open the text up. Now, in MemoQ, you have the source text, the text you're translating. You have an area to put your translation, the target area for the target segments. And over here, you're given help. Now, I did partially translate this text before, so some of the segments are in a translation memory. There's also some help from term bases, fragment assembly, other help. We can also get um, a preview of the text to help us as well with the context. Now, coming back to this, this phrase, post-edited machine translation, or PEMPT, as it is also often called, is essentially the following. You may be sent a text to translate where the machine translation has already been put into the text. And you will be asked to edit this. Use the machine translation as a guide and then to take the text and change it. I'm using the uh, text on the website as my guide for how to translate. So obviously there's many ways to translate text. Oops, better change that. Anyway, so this is post-edited machine translation. Put the machine translation here and then change it to improve it. In a way, we are revising machine translation. We are editing after we've put it, so it's post-edited machine translation. Presumably, we are partially doing this because it saves us a lot of typing. Now, I would like to suggest the following model. First of all, let's get rid of um, these translations. Let's go back to having the text to translate and our help at the side. So, now, this actually was already translated um, in another text I did. So here we can see we have the translation. And it's been put here. It's in my translation memory. I'm quite happy to accept that. 
This is also from the translation memory. I'll accept that. I don't particularly like that. And where has this come from? Now, this has come from down here, which is machine translation. So I'm just going to do something first. I'm going to come here, right clicking, customize appearance, and this is showing me all the help I get. I'm just going to move the machine translation up to the top. If I come back to this um, segment, now the machine translation is at the top. More importantly though, because it's at the top, it's the one that is showed here. I think I may also just very quickly um, increase the size of this text, if I can. Okay, just so you can see it more easily. No, unfortunately I can't change the size of this, so let me put it back. Now, here, this is machine translation. I don't want it, so I just take it out. But what I can do now is to translate is I have all my resources, including machine translation. I can look at it if I want. Strange, isn't it? Let me come here. Now, I can look at this, and if I want to use it, I can use it. It can be one more resource to help me decide what the translation is. When I'm ready, I turn the voice recognition on, and I start dictating. Scratch that. The most important sectors of Portugal's economy in 2012 were wholesale and retail trade, comma, transport, comma, accommodation and food services, open per n, 25.0%, close per n, and public administration, comma, defence, comma, education, comma, human health and social work activities, open per n, 19.5%, close per n, and industry, open per n, 18.7%, close per n. Full stop. Go to sleep. I just switched the, the um, voice recognition software off so I could talk. Now, we use these resources and then I decided what my translation would be and I dictated it, I spoke it. In this way, the machine translation can be discreetly available should the translator wish to use it. The translator uses the source text and all the resources here and thinks and produces the translation. Let me show you another example, but this time I'll make a mistake. Portugal imports and exports mainly to Jamaica, comma, Poland, and the United Kingdom, full stop. In this case, there's no reason not just to accept the machine translation. So I'll just press... Oops.
Notice I have to put tags in. Let's try another one. Select 2014. Go to sleep. So, the methodology is actually agnostic as regards to how useful or not machine translation is. You can use it as much or as little as you wish. Now I'm going to show you how you can use voice recognition to revise. Normally we would go through a text after we'd spoken and we would change away like this. Okay, in this case I get the help like that. But if you think about it, this is very similar to what we were doing a few minutes ago with the machine translation, typing away. Is there a way of using voice recognition um, without having to type when we do our revision? Yes. Close translation. Right click here. And click on Add to Live Document. What we're doing is putting the text and the translation we have just made into live documents. And the text is here. We can have a look at it. So this is our translation. Now what's the advantage of putting our translation here? Because, if we go back to our translation and open it up, let's use the same technique to clear the translations. To do this, we right click, choose Clear Translations, and select All Translations. And now we start again. But we can come, for example, to here. This time, if you notice, we get the machine translation. And we also get this suggestion. Let's have a look at where this has come from. If we look at uh, Show Document, ah, it's the text we just put in Live Docs, which is our translation. Sorry about this. And if we look at this, we'll see the color is actually coming from The live docs. So I can put this or rather use it, wake up, wake up, Portugal imports and exports mainly to Spain, comma, France and Germany, comma. Go to sleep. So, just as we had the machine translation a few minutes ago as one more resource to help us translate, if we put our translation into Live Docs, 
we can use that to create our revision. And once again, we don't have to type to produce our revision. We can just um, dictate. We also don't necessarily have to go through selecting words. For example, select mainly, principally, select imports, has imported, go to sleep, we have the choice of saying everything again. In this way we do two dictations, but it is worth considering whether that is more efficient than typing or individually selecting items to change. So, this has been showing how we can go from post-editing machine translation to pre-editing it, and how we can go from editing a translation when we revise to just speaking the revision. Thank you for your attention.